then uh, we'll jump into what is cloud and uh, what are we doing here with the cloud and everything. Uh, there was a saying in the past, uh, IT was eating up uh, all the manual jobs and now cloud is eating up the IT. Uh, so that's the new uh, line uh, that we have to adapt to uh, the new situations or circumstances. Uh, cloud is nothing but it's a shared service. Uh, it's a shared service. The service where you will utilize, you will, uh, it's easy to use, yeah, easy to track, easy to maintain, and uh, pay as you go. You, you won't be buying a lot of things in upfront and uh, worrying about uh, not being able to utilize them or return of investments. Uh, rather, uh, you would start using something which you really require. And if you discover that is not required by you, you would drop it off and start something else. Uh, and when when we say you you, you will utilize uh, services, these these are predominantly related to uh, your infrastructure, IT infrastructure. Uh, let it be server, let it be database, let it be storage, let it be uh, microservices, uh, micro servers, uh, be it anything related to uh, an IT company, which which we, we the underlying uh, foundation of an IT company. Right. Uh, so in, in the past, I'll, I'll, I'll quote a little bit, a little bit of small example. Uh, in the past, if you like to set up a Swiggy company, just uh, for an example, for 10 years ago or 12 years ago, if you would like to set up a Swiggy company, uh, you would have to buy uh, the server racks, the storage, and you have to uh, buy a land. Uh, go on for construction and uh, hire uh, professionals who can maintain this uh, data farm and uh, and and also you have to pay for the electricity bills and rest of the all the things that are uh, there to maintain a physical environment or a physical data center and e even after setting up everything um, let's say you incurred a cost of uh, uh, co cost of establishment like 20 20 crores or maybe 15 crores uh, and you have not yet launched your swiki company uh, and you would not know if your Swiki company would uh, would be a successful or not be a, will not be a successful venture. But you still have to go up front and may, you know uh, maintain all these things to even start a company like that. And uh, you, you uh, let's say you have established everything and you have started the company and uh, down the line six months down the line you have you haven't done great. But uh, what has happened is your customer requirements change. So maybe your uh, vision has changed. Your direction for your company has changed and you have to, uh, you know, sell or maybe the the, the physical uh, components which you have purchased have become obsolete or not, you, not really usable for your new idea. Then what you have to do is you have to probably sell out uh, what you have and buy uh, new physical components, new servers, and maybe new storage systems, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's not really a, a great, great uh, way to do a business, right? So do you have that flexibility uh, by operating your own data center? No. What happens if you really want to explore in, in that way? Uh, you, you have uh, quite a bit of changing ideas in every three months, six months. You want to start a business and you you just want to try it out uh, for six months and you you want to see if it runs well you would keep it and if it doesn't then you want to start something else do you have that flexibility with your physical data center no with cloud or uh, with aws or with uh, any any cloud service provider you have that flexibility you have uh, you, you don't have any contracts with this um, uh, with the cloud service provider uh, for most of the components or most of the services you start using something uh, let's say your server you have deployed your web server and application server mobile application server and uh, made your website available at the worldwide or in a specific country and you and three months down you thought this is not something uh, you want to do uh, let's say it was just a news uh, uh, news website then six months down the line thought no, this website isn't really working out you would probably uh move blocks came then uh previously it's just a compute of my servers which are suitable for uh, news website and now you have to uh, get a gaming optimized graphics optimized server for your game launch then what you have to do with aws or any club service provider you would naturally 
uh, end to contract or end whatever uh, uh, servers you have purchased or uh, taken on rent and then start procuring uh, new servers. Uh, so that, that means you will get you will get a new set of servers which are suitable for graphics, right? And in that you are venturing out. You are you are very flexible in terms of how you want to conduct your business. So this is what happens with the cloud. And today, if you want to start a Swiggy company, it just takes seven minutes for you to start as a company like Swiggy. Uh, provided you have all the code uh, to deploy and you have all the people ready to manage but honestly you don't have to manage any of the physical components it will be taken care by aws at the aws data center end you just have to start using it you use it for one hour two hour three hours you, you can pay for whatever you have used that's the catch that's why cloud is the best and i would start with who can learn cloud or who can uh, be an expert on cloud or who can start on uh, uh, on with the cloud uh, i would honestly say even my grandmother uh, can be an expert in cloud provided she de she dedicates herself uh, these two to three hours a day and uh, for next five or four or five months and she should be an expert so it's that easy it's not really hard it's not really complicated you don't have to deal with a lot of a um, uh, lot of coding or a lot of um, language related problems uh, it's mostly gui it's better if you even know uh, if you if you know the linux uh, otherwise you can pretty much manage or start with gui that means graphical user interface start click 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 and submit so that way uh, and then uh, you can upskill yourself so yeah Let's get on to the details of AWS uh, training and certification course. This is a professional course for next 45 days. And before we move on to the next topic, I would like to know if I have any questions from the group. All right, none, thank you. All right, what are we going to learn in this course? AWS Solutions Architect Associate. I'm hoping everybody is a starter in the cloud or AWS. So this is where we start. There is a course, uh, maybe, maybe a lighter one than, than the current one, AWS Solutions Architect Associate, which is a cloud practitioner course, which is for a really beginner. I would say if you're in school or if you're, if you're in a college, uh, uh, I mean, you can start there, but it is not really necessary. You can start from here. Uh, you can still catch up the entire uh, content in the cloud practitioner. I would recommend as a, any beta graduate or any uh, professional, you, you would want to start yourself at AWS Solutions Architect Associate level. Uh, so this is the uh, level two uh, of AWS certifications. We have uh, 10 plus certifications and a lot more in there, a lot, lot of content in there but this is the best place to start and once you start here uh, it's a natural progression it's an exponential growth for yourself in terms of professionally uh, um, the reason being cloud is ever expanding and a lot of companies like i said swiggy or many many other companies who doesn't want to maintain a physical environment they want to induct themselves into the cloud because it's easy to manage uh, and it's easy to pay bills and honestly aws always strives to make it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper cheaper and cheaper every day for you for for the customers they try to give it for free to be honest and if there is a charge it will be very minimal uh, and that is the reason why the business model of aws has been successful 61% uh, market share of aws so of a cloud uh, service providers is of aws right we'll talk about uh, what is architecting in aws and we'll discuss simple architectures when i say simple architectures let's just say uh, uh, if you are on amazon website uh, you chose a product you want to buy it and you have uh, checked out this product in the cart you have made the payment and you got the message and the same uh, the same workflow has been sent to the delivery center or a fulfillment center that so and so person kirti has ordered so and so uh, item uh, and it should be delivered uh, on so and so date 
and abhishek will be delivering it or uh, and uh, sweta will be the coordinator of of this uh, entire workflow so this is a very small uh, process in the in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other processes inside amazon so we'll talk about some of the simple architectures you have to design as an architect you're supposed to design how things work how things function so i'll tell you uh, a difference between an architect uh, and a person who knows the code uh, is like a difference between a mason a mastery who builds the house uh, versus a, an architect who designs the house uh, that stating that this room should be this big that room should be that big a living room should be this big and there should be this two tv cabinet and so and so forth a, ma a mason can provide you uh, uh, can help you in building all those uh, uh, in building the house and in terms of uh, giving a rudimentary uh, house plan but an architect gives you a best plan according to your requirements you would say i want to store the rain uh, rainwater then your architect should be able to deliver such a design that you will be able to store it rain, uh, rainwater you want a lot of sunlight coming into the uh, your living room your bedroom your mastery or a mason may not be able to uh, think about uh, how to uh, probably design the best uh, but your architect should be so that is a difference when you are going through this course uh, you will be a professional and you will be you will be a person where you will uh, you will understand how to design a company or how it should function so those are the things that we will discuss in the simple architectures and you will talk about compute layers uh, predominantly related to servers server farm uh, micro servers um, uh, schedule you know uh, the pricing of the servers types of servers uh, uses of servers non users of servers a lot of those things we'll talk about networking in aws and there's a part one and part two uh, part one will be more uh, related to the components how one component functions with each component and the part two is more about how the aws work and we'll also talk about identity access management what is identity access management it's like I know looking at this chat, there's Abhishek here, there's Shweta here, there's Kirti here, there's uh, Chivakula is here and Gaurav is here. And uh, like that, um, I, I would know who who is who, who is supposed to be in this call and who is not supposed to be in this call if somebody else has joined uh, which i would which i will notice and i would tell them hey you're not supposed to be in this call could you please switch to a different call right so that that's how uh, those are the some of the things identity access management you should know who will who should be in the system and who should be out of the system a lot of those things uh, it is not as simple as we i just told but uh, it's a little bit complicated and uh, a lot of deeper uh, in material so we'll also talk about identity access management we'll talk about elasticity high availability and monitoring right and elasticity high availability and monitoring that means how better can you really use your uh, aws cloud to uh, better yourself uh, or to better your business and probably innovate for your customers rather than worrying about what is uh, happening in your uh, in your it infrastructure or how to maintain it so those are the things we'll talk about elasticity you'll talk about a lot of data centers how they function and uh, how should you decide what kind of servers to deploy and should should you deploy a simple server should you deploy a server farm should you deploy an automated server so those are the things we'll discuss in this and automation uh, up until when we reach until here we'll talk about individual components and here we'll discuss about how to make it automate if anybody is a team leader or a team manager you would know as a team leader or a team manager and let's say abhishek is a team and uh, was an architect before and now is a team manager as a team manager abhishek would not really uh, work on the ground projects he, he's of course he's aware of the ground projects but he's he doesn't really engage himself into working on the ground projects because to be an effective team manager abhishek will focus on identifying his talents in the team and then give them assign tasks to them uh, assign tasks to them and uh, help them develop the pro, uh, uh, templates or architect or uh, structures or uh, designs and and invest in his people so that that's what uh, we learn in automation we'll identify what are the best uh, processes or services we have in aws and we'll try to automate them 
caching we'll talk about a lot of caching uh, caching helps us reduce the cost of uh, infrastructure and building decoupled architectures we'll talk about uh, architectures uh, or uh, services which talk to each other uh, even when we are sleeping and we'll talk about microservices like lambda functions uh, cloud nine uh, cloud formation templates uh, a lot of those things in microservices rto rpo and backup recovery uh, disaster recovery we'll talk about those optimization and reviews course wrap up and an appendix so there's a lot into it uh, before we start uh, and get into um, um, for the more details any questions till now So just have a one quick question though when you say lambda functions, right? I mean obviously uh, Are we going to talk about? Uh, uh, glue and few other functionalities before talk about lambda or uh, is it going to be just? Uh, glue is glue? not uh, related to architect uh, Solutions architecture. It is more related to uh, data analytics. Yeah, so we'll not talk about glue Okay, and what about SQS SNS and that those are the SQS SNS uh, topics are there. Uh, we'll also talk about MQ. Uh, so those are definitely in decoupled architectures. Okay. Yeah. Super. Excellent. I'll not bore you on the day one uh, with a lot of content, but uh, we'll touch base on uh, what is AWS and uh, what are some of the things that we look at as an architect, right? All right, what is cloud? Like I said, I've already, uh, I guess I've explained a lot about it. Programmable resources, uh, that means you don't really worry about physical hardware. But you just have to ensure you have a developer and you have a uh, good developer team and they are they with the code to deploy your website uh, in the web uh, in the uh, version and you have good developer developer team who are also uh, writing the code which can help you deploy a mobile application you see every other day you will have a new mobile application there's one example i would say right uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of you know licious company licious company which sells the meat uh, pre-cooked and cooked meats and uh, raw meats and all those things licious company have you noticed as soon as the licious company got launched within about three or four months there are other companies very much similar to licious company and probably these com new companies have different models like 10 minutes delivery 15 minutes delivery have you all noticed uh, can i get a yes or a no uh, in the chat Yeah, we will also talk about yes. Uh, thanks, Gaurav. You asked uh, if we are talking about DB or server migration. Absolutely, we'll be talking about server migration. We'll talk about uh, on-premises to uh, AWS migration. We'll talk about a lot of migration-related uh, tools: uh, Snow, uh, Snow Family, Snowball, Snow Edge, Snow, uh, Snowmobile, uh, Glacier, a uh, lot of those things. And we'll also talk about uh, how to connect your physical data center to AWS data center through Direct Connect VPN. Uh, and we'll also talk about uh, how to transition your uh, uh, very old uh, storage tapes uh, to AWS uh, storage systems so that you can redundantly save them in the cloud and not worry about the story, uh, you know, degradation of their storage tapes. Absolutely, we'll be talking about those. And thanks for answering, Vira. You have answered it right. We, it's evident that we are seeing a lot of, a uh, lot of companies like Licious coming up in every 10, 15 days. I mean, how do you imagine uh, such a business getting launched worldwide, Pan India, uh, in such no time? How are people so confident about it? The reason being one, the social media explosion, uh, expl exploding social media that they can reach out to you. And second, uh, due to the cloud related services. Now, 
i'm pretty sure none of these companies are maintaining their own physical environment they are pretty much operating on cloud based environments that means they are renting out their servers their storages to deploy their websites make uh, you know uh, build the systems where they can ha- they can have customers order and orders get delivered because ev- nowadays every day everything is in template form if you decide to uh, start a company something like licious you don't have to ask your developer to sit down and write each and every line of the code there is already pre existing uh, for templates they can uh, build upon and they can change few elements and they can uh, you have a different company altogether licious to flicious something like that so you have programmable resources uh, the physical side you don't have to worry uh, aws uh, will take care of it dynamic abilities like i said you, now you have started licious company but tomorrow you want to start a gaming company you can do that within a week of time or next day itself you want to change the company you can do that you can change with the aws that's the uh, that's the nice part of it pay as you go you would only pay for what you have used so it's not like even recharging your mobile phone you you, you have to recharge your mobile phone even you have, even before you start using it so even it's not even that you you first use it and you pay for what you have used it's as simple as that right six advantages of cloud computing trade capital expense there is no capital that is required to start a company hey, uh, let me tell you one thing there are companies uh, like uh, edureka there are companies like uh, uh, other uh, educational com- educational websites they Uh, most of them have operated their websites by making money for uh, for free uh, for at least one one and a half year you know how because they are very smart that inside aws there are types of servers there are uh, ec2 servers Ele- uh, elastic compute cloud and there are lambda servers using lambda servers you will get 10 million uh, functions free uh, every year so w- it's easy for you to deploy a lot of lambda servers and run your company for free for one and a half year or one year uh, without paying anything but you can still make money uh, for th- uh, $400,000 or $500,000 so there are companies like that who who were operating <laughs> their businesses for one year without paying any money so forget about uh, investing uh, to be uh, to be honest in the first place benefits of massive uh economic scale of course you have a lot of uh, benefits in that and you don't have to stop you don't have to really guess today will i get 100 customers tomorrow will i get 300 customers uh will i get 200 customers day after should i really buy, buy up front you don't have to worry about it the reason why uh it's like akshay patra right what does akshay patra do <laughs> you, you, you have 20 guests today and you have 30 guests today and you don't have, you don't have any guests a day after but you still have to be ready uh, with your uh, cooking and with your food that you want to uh, feed or uh, feed your guests uh, within no time how would you do that as a person like let's say 20 guests are arriving at your home uh, this morning at 9 am and you have to Uh, get the lunch ready by 11 12 pm you haven't in, you haven't even purchased the vegetables or meat or whatever you want in the first place right and it's the same thing every day how would you manage it as a person you would not be able to manage it with aws there is a button called um, uh, auto scaling you click that button and you sleep off you get 100 customers 100 customer you, you will have servers started up automatically serving the 100 customers and tomorrow there are no customers your servers will drop down to zero because they uh, so that you don't get any any charge and because there are no customers and day after that you have 200 customers 20 servers get started up automatically because you have already clicked that button so with the auto scaling you can serve any number of customers and you will only be uh, uh, using those many servers which are required for that number of customers that means you are only paying for what you are uh, really want to uh, use right it's a great uh, great capability increase speed and agility you know, you will have lot of quick and fast resolution times focus on what matters 
you will have a lot of time to focus on your customers and develop your business rather than worrying about should i update my patch should i update my database how what if if my database has crashed after updating how will i roll back you for you forget about all those things uh, and then sit down and relax go global you can start your company in india today and uh, by evening you can start your company in paris south korea australia bahrain uh, uae northern virginia east coast west coast of us anywhere in the world right that's that's pretty much uh, how how we are looking at well architected framework right as an architect yourself uh, we are got a fitness of the uh, rest of our people here you would you would focus on five main pillars like say um uh, like in shurya um uh, what is that quote uh, by amita bachchan uh then remember so there are three core values on uh, on how a human should, human being should function like everybody has their own core values uh, somebody has a core value that uh somebody has a core value that uh with your devo value something like that right you have your own core values as an architect you should have these five core values within yourself you should always put the security in the first place did did anyone get to hear uh, any of the security breaches into the data uh, database and a lot of data was compromised any such example from the team any company that has lo lost its ability to secure their database and uh, outside parties have got gained uh, access to the data and data is compromised please please go ahead vira i think there is a recent breach from the blackstone i guess so which is you know a hospital donating system backend and that caused a lot of uh, healthcare records to be compromised right i are, are you located in us right now yes Now that's why you were so much worried about uh, your, uh, you know, uh, the, the data of the medical patients, right? It's yeah. very important that uh, in US at least, and a lot of other European countries. Doesn't mean that it's not there in India as well. It is there, but not to an extent where uh, it is scrutinized. But in US, it's very important that as a patient, uh, you will only be uh, like, like uh, I want to put it in a right way. your data is so secured that nobody will be able to have nobody will have access to your uh, medical history unless you physically approve somebody and probably something like that uh, uh, otherwise your data is not supposed to be breached your medical history is not supposed to be shared with anyone so it's that critical so for that there are a lot of regulations like hipaa uh, so a lot of regulations and certifications that you need to acquire uh let me tell you vira aws has uh, acquired those certifications and it is hipaa certified and i guess you might you might have already researched into that uh, but yes you have to always put your security first uh, there is fa facebook data breach there is github data breach there are a lot of data breaches which happens uh, where your data gets compromised your database gets compromised and your tables become public and your customer information is public and uh, some of them will go to an extent where they will sell that data in the black market so <laughs> so you don't want that those things to happen as a virtue i let me tell you this as a virtue uh, you don't have to really worry about uh, those things aws automatically takes care of uh, ddos attacks sin attacks uh, lot of attacks that happen into your uh, your infrastructure aws already takes care of those and additional to that you can deploy more security related server uh, services so that you are uh, you are secured to the top so yeah uh please go anything you would like to add vira yeah, i mean i just wanted to add a few more security breaches probably in please, recent please, please. days interesting please go ahead please. probably the less, latest one would be the spring uh security breach i mean uh, the vulnerable vulnerability that the spring framework has it uh and another one is a log for just security vulnerability that <coughs> wow. almost i mean what is that what is that second one log log 4g okay uh, can you explain that I, honestly there's no uh, i do not have okay. visibility into it probably yeah, yeah. Okay. i think if you are using a, a java version i mean log 4g 3.8 or higher in a recent days i mean there was a, a bug in a log 4g uh, 
uh, <clears throat> binaries where you can technically, if you know, you know, uh, you can hack into any system basically. And Excellent. You know, it's a it's a free it's a free version of you know software, right? I mean, uh, uh, provided by Apache, and you know everyone uses it for free, but uh, none of the major companies uh, actually spend money to fix it. But they end up uh, you know spending too much money in a recent uh, probably two months back or three months back, I guess, when there is a you know vulnerability uh, identified by a resource. And right. everyone uh, probably took about uh, six months to completely fix it. Wow! So, uh, so you're saying a lot of companies were open using open source and probably not an enterprise version. Yeah, uh, including uh, Informatica is one of the major customers. I mean, it, wow. it, it just writes the you know uh, detailed logs about what happened and you now how the connectivity is established so, and all the things that finally it, has. It, sends me to a question that how a security engineer misses these kind of things and do they really vet the software uh, before prior prior to approving uh, uh, prior to approval of usage of these uh, services it's it's very sad that uh, they they do rely uh, at least for informatica like you're saying i can understand about the smaller firms but the bigger firms i uh, i would as a security engineer, as an architect, I would not allow anything which is sitting as an open source. I download it from the internet and then start using it, right? Well, and so it's not should... just Informatica, right? I mean, there are a lot of other companies who use it, I mean, what... including Google and everyone uses it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, um, <coughs> those are the things that we want to put in front before we take a decision with AWS. So, uh, good examples, Vera. Thanks a lot for adding up in there. I hope a lot of other things will be coming out of the rest of the team members during the course of the time. Uh, but yeah, security is one thing that you want to be 100% uh, sure and reliability. So I'll, I'll, I will talk about a lot of security related uh, tools and services that we can use in multiple different uh, situations. Uh, and we'll, we'll also talk about uh, reliability. How reliable is your uh, friend? It's like how reliable can you rely on your friend in the times of a need? So it's something like it's much more than that in AWS. Uh, can you rely on AWS to back you up uh, during the desperate times of failures or uh, or uh, can can an AWS architect call you up and support you uh, for that matter when when you don't have enough workforce or uh, somebody has already quit in your company and you, you need some help with uh, maintaining your infrastructure how reliable is in how reliable is AWS in terms of even providing support and maintaining a great infrastructure and not having a lot of outages so those are also things you need to focus on as a well architect well arch, uh, sorry arch, uh, solutions architect cost optimization the first and for the the most bottom line of everything is a cost uh, without money there's nothing moving in this world let's let's be honest about it and uh, the likewise you, you you need to decide which services to use should you use lambda function should you use ec2 server ec2 server and lambda functions if you're smart enough you can have you can design your lambda functions to function in such a way which are uh, which is very equal to ec2 uh, functions in most of the cases so but lambda functions are free to some extent and ec2s are charging chargeable so you have to decide as to what is the best resource for your workload uh, so you need to you need to compromise on cost uh, sometimes and you you can uh, go for a better things with a higher cost so as an architect you should you should be able to take the, those decisions Perform, performance efficiency i don't have to really talk about performance efficiency you should be efficient in your uh, result or outcome uh, and operational excellence how easy is how easy is it for your uh, employees or customers to operate or navigate through your service well, those are the these are the five important pillars uh, you should focus on when uh, dealing with uh, uh, your architectures. And let's get into let's not get into the details of I've already talked about this. So, so it's the same content, right? What is a data center? Any idea what is a data center? Shweta, would you like to answer that question? Any idea on what is a data center? Chat. Abhishek, any idea on what is data center? <coughs> Online storage. 
<coughs> good, good. To some extent, yes. And Gaurav, any idea on data center? What is a data center? Hey, are you guys serious? <laughs> Priti, sorry, Kirti. I mean, you don't you don't have to be hundred percent correct. You can Online just give me. Data. Sure, sure. C can you repeat that once again? Online storage, you can keep keep on data. Super. Online storage, absolutely yeah. correct. It's an online storage. <laughs> um yes it's an online storage because you can only access through online if you have a good internet connection i agree to that uh kirti your answer for data center shweta right i would say you know data center is basically a a large group of uh, you know uh, maybe you know network computers you know put it together where which can be used in multi ways you know could be for your applications uh, or could be for your websites you know uh, backend storages or a regular uh, you know local uh, uh, file system sure you know storages and all so great guys it's not really complicated uh, i it would have been easy for all of you to just Google it. What does a data center look like? Uh, pretty much it is like a fulfillment center itself where you have a lot of packages, a lot of tracks and a lot of these, uh, you know, dumps and everything robots. It's it looks pretty much the same, but only on the software world. The data center is nothing but a com, uh, compilation of server racks, uh, storage units, uh, your Dell VM hardware uh, and all those things. With that, without that, you can you cannot really function. You cannot really operate uh, a, a, an IT company. So I, I I would really appreciate if you guys uh, explore it uh, and Google it and could have uh, given an answer. But uh, I did not see participation from some of you. And I, I don't. Uh, you don't have to really shy about anything. Or maybe if you're not not interested you can let me know but uh, uh, giving an answer is very much important being interactive is very much important yeah you, know, you you might not know everything even i might not know everything but be interacting with each other is very important so yeah i expect an answer next time uh, but let's just talk about a lot of servers and racks uh, placed in a cold environment uh, so that they function efficiently and they provide your uh, and they provide the support for your website or a mobile application to run online. So a data centers um, uh, is like uh, let's forget about uh, talking about more about data centers. Let's talk about availability zones. Or probably talk about regions. What are regions? Uh, around the world, there are so many data centers at least like uh, 70 uh, 80 plus data centers of aws uh, around the world and uh, when i say uh, when we look at this chart it says mumbai has three bahrain has three singapore has three sydney has three and paris has three some of them northern virginia has six that means this is a region india is a region like a country is a region where the presence of data center is there and the number three represents the number of data sensor data centers which are uh, there in that region in india when we say uh, we have aws region we have aws related data centers but they are in mumbai and there are three data centers in mumbai data centers are not like just beside each other you would not say data center one data center is in secunderabad and one data center is in hyderabad or it should be rather 100 100 kilometers away from one data center to another data center the reason being if there is a natural calamity one data center go bust and other data centers are still active so in mumbai itself we have three uh, data centers and mumbai itself is called a one region Likewise, in Hyderabad also, we are getting a new data center. Uh, so in Hyderabad, we will have at least two 
uh, data centers and Hyderabad will be one region, right? You should know that a country is a region. Sometimes one country has two to three regions like US has more than like uh, six regions, uh, but each num each region has two to three data centers, two minimum, right? Like Beijing, you have two data centers. You have Tokyo four and Osaka one. In Japan itself, we have five data centers. So let's talk, let's understand what in what is an availability zone. Like I said, each data center is called an availability zone, and one or more availability zones comprises to become a region. Right? Mumbai is a region. Mumbai has three data centers. That means three availability zones. Right? You get me? Data center equal to availability zone group of data centers or group of availability zones equal to region that's what this is very important that you remember this i'll repeat it once again data center is equal to availability zone group of availability zones one two three group of availability zone become a region right it's like that Good and one availability zone to another availability zone. They are far isolated from each other. However, they are connected and by underground cables, but they are isolated just to make sure if there is a natural calamity at Patancharu, one end of Hyderabad, then we are still uh, pretty much doing uh, well and safe at LV Nagar. It's like that. One data center can be at the far end corner of LV Nagar and another data center can be far end corner of Patancharu. So these are two different uh, opposite sides of Hyderabad. So you would want your data centers or availability zones to be positioned in such a way. Right. And when I say data center, you can do everything and anything related to AWS. There, there is something called edge locations. We have 220 plus edge locations. Edge locations, you have to understand that uh, this is a very small data center, only doing a small job. Let, let's say uh, let's say there is a uh, cricket match or a, there is a football match happening where in Paris anyone anyone watches football matches here anyone follows football match here can I have a yes in the chat anyone EPL English Premier League Barcelona Chelsea nah, we follow American football American football okay <laughs> Right, football. No. Okay, let's say a football match is getting streamed at Paris, and then you have football enthusiasts somewhere in Singapore. How would you stream that uh, that, that live that football match as a live in Singapore? What you let's say what you do is you use AWS data center or an availability zone to uh, stream that uh, game real time in Paris and connect that server to an edge location in Singapore edge location. So you are paying less if you are using data center, you are paying more. If you are uh, if you are using edge location, you are paying less connect the Paris server to the edge location in Singapore and uh, you get a URL give that URL to your customers in Singapore and then you can stream your uh, match live anyway even in singapore even in antarctica by using an edge location of south africa even in north pole by using an edge location of sweden also like that any corner of the world you can uh, probably stream a website uh, sorry you can host a website and stream a live video using an edge location it is as simple as that edge location doesn't do much it just uh, hosts a website simple website uh, or probably stream a live video yeah Cool. I think we have reached to somewhere end of the class, but let, let me show you a diagram which you will all will be designing. So the, looking at this diagram, uh, let's just say this diagram represents what happens when you uh, purchase a uh, onion parata from your Swiggy uh, uh, Swiggy application or you might have purchased some McDonald's or maybe KFC's finger licking chicken uh, pocket or something like that you, you you have chosen an item you have added that item to a card you have you have uh, 
clicked on the checkout and you have paid an amount and that message goes to the uh, restaurant and that message goes to a delivery guy and you will also get a confirmation that there is an order and so within so and so time your order gets delivered so this is a very smallest and simplest function and let just say this function this web diagram represents that function how how should you design that function a smallest function so you, we, by end of this course you will design bigger bigger lot of i mean a huge hu huge diagrams you, you'll be able to design huge diagrams and a uh, lot of many functions uh, connect them together and and be a best architect uh, in the system right this is a sample you'll design a lot of these uh, functions by end of this class do not worry we'll talk about each and every component throughout the course i said you, you have services and components each of this one represents uh, uh, a component in aws and it has own its own unique function it's very fast each function is very fast and do, do not worry about it i'll take you through all of these functions and by end of this class this will be nothing like a, nothing but a piece of a cake walk so i assure you on that do not worry i can even train my grandmother uh, on aws if provided you should be very enthusiastic and interested about it to make him um, to get a job and make money later so yeah even if you want to become a lecturer like me or maybe something like that even that would do Right, with that, I would conclude this session and leave next of the three minutes for a QA. Uh, please go ahead. I see somebody has dropped. Uh, I hope that is a network uh, disconnection. But any questions, please? Abhishek, Sweta, Gaurav, Veera. I'm good from my end. I already asked too many questions. So. No problem. I encourage Abhishek, uh, you can ask me any question, like simple question, boring question, doesn't matter. I am not here to judge you, but rather I am here to teach you. Let me tell you clearly one thing. If you ask me a question for 100 times, I will be there to answer that question 100 times. I don't bother. I don't worry. I don't say, hey, do you not understand in the first time? I, I'm not that kind of person. Uh, in the I When I learn, uh, when I indulge myself into a course, I expect my instructor to be like that include me uh, let me ask my question answer my question and make me comfortable so i believe in that i, I try and i assure you that you will you will even uh, feel the same so yeah two more minutes shweta gaurav any questions How oh, I met uh, non-IT experience to AWS in future work? Yes, Gaurav. Gaurav, comfortable in Hindi, Telugu? Uh, Hindi. Hindi. So, uh, job no, job non-IT will remain, right? So, you don't have any difference from that. You have to start from here and you have to learn to learn. There are so many people. Let me tell you one example, Gaurav. मेरा मैनेजर जो है वो बीएससी केमिकल वाला था और वो बिहार का पटना का था बट वो भी छा रहा है उसका चल रहा है मस्त मस्त उसका चल रहा है क्यों उसको सब्जेक्ट से मैटर कर उसको सब्जेक्ट से इम्पोर्टेंट है जो मतलब मैं हम लोग पंद्रह सो पंद्रह सो लोगों को हायर करते हैं हर साल हर साल पंद्रह सो लोगों को हायर करते हैं पिछले तीन साल से करते आ रहे हैं हमने कभी उन लोग का बी और बी हो या कौन सा बैकग्राउंड के हो तुम कौन सा इंजीनियरिंग करे हो उसका क्या परसेंटेज है वो तो फर्क ही नहीं पड़ता हमको हमको बस जानना है कि इसको इस बंदे को आता है कि नहीं आता है इसको कंटेंट आता है इसको आता है इसको समझ में आता है कि सर्वर कैसे काम करता है आई ओनली आई एम ओनली इंटरेस्टेड इफ दिस पर्सन नोस हाउ दिस फंक्शंस एंड आई एम नॉट एक्सपेक्टिंग फ्रॉम दैट पर्सन टू बी 100% एक्सपर्ट ऑन दैट कंपोनेंट एट लीस्ट यू शुड हैव अ बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑन हाउ इट फंक्शंस सो दैट आई कैन हायर यू मैं आपको हायर कर सका और आप आपको मैं ट्रेन कर सका उससे क्या मेरा मतलब कंपनी बढ़ेगा मेरे को जैसा चाहिए वैसा मैं आपको ट्रेन कर लूंगा बस आपको ये आना चाहिए कि उसको मिनिमम उसका कैसा काम करता है मतलब इतना तो okay. आपको जानना चाहिए आईटी नॉन आईटी से कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ने वाला बस इतना है कि आपको कंटेंट आता है कि नहीं 
यही चलेगा मार्केट में मानेश नहीं किसी को किसी को भी कुछ पढ़ा नहीं है कि कितना परसेंटेज आया मजा आएगा अब सीखते रहो सीखते रहो सीखने से ही कुछ होने वाला गुड है अभिषेक यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन good we are right on time thanks a lot for joining uh, it has been a great session for me at least and thanks gorav puchne ke liye question thanks veera for being an interactive shweta i guess you are unmuting yourself so please go ahead i have a question uh, i haven't get um, the about the ability zone and what do you said about the group of ability zone uh, okay okay हाँ तो मैंने जब वेन आई सेड कि एवरी लाइक सो देर आर ट्वेंटी टू रीजन श्वेता अक्रॉस वर्ल्ड वाइड देर आर ट्वेंटी टू रीजन दैट मीन्स ट्वेंटी बाईस रीजन में ए डब्ल्यू एस का प्रेजेंस है लाइक यहाँ पे बता रहा है कि मुंबई में देर इज ए मुंबई मुंबई इज ए रीजन राइट मुंबई में बता रहे कि तीन नंबर दैट मीन्स मुंबई इज ए रीजन बट मुंबई में वी हैव थ्री डेटा सेंटर्स डेटा सेंटर मतलब अवेलेबिलिटी जोन समझो यू जस्ट हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड यू डोंट एड्रेस द डेटा सेंटर एज ए अवेलेबिलिटी जोन अवेलेबिलिटी जोन वन अवेलेबिलिटी जोन टू अवेलेबिलिटी जोन थ्री वैसा यू गेट वट आई एम सेइंग लाइक हैदराबाद एक रीजन है हैदराबाद में साउथ इंडिया शॉपिंग मॉल यू हैव थ्री और फोर साउथ इंडिया शॉपिंग मॉल्स यू गेट मी तो आप साउथ इंडिया शॉपिंग मॉल में शॉपिंग करते हो वो कावर के नीचे लिखा रहता है दे विल राइट इन सच वे दैट वी आर वी आर लोकेटेड इन कमम वी आर लोकेटेड इन पटना वी आर लोकेटेड इन लखनऊ वी आर लोकेटेड इन हैदराबाद बट दे विल दे से दैट आई एम लोकेटेड इन साइड हैदराबाद इन कुकटपल्ली नाचारम और बोविनपल्ली एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा वैसे तो नहीं लिखते ना they say that they are present in hyderabad but when you get into more detail you will know acha hyderabad mein teen aur center hai inke so like that mumbai mein hai this is a region mumbai mein kaha kaha hai wo teen availability zones ho gaya matlab availability zone 1 matlab data center 1 availability zone 2 matlab data center 2 availability zone 3 that means data center 3 वैसे mumbai mein teen teen data centers hai teen data centers kyun chahiye pura duniya use पूरा देश यूज कर रही है तो उनको तीन डेटा सेंटर लगे हैं अगर उनको लग रहा है कि बहुत ज्यादा कस्टमर्स बढ़ रहे हैं लाइक सो मेनी कस्टमर्स आर इंक्रीजिंग देन व्हाट दे विल डू दे विल ऐड मोर डेटा सेंटर चौथा आएगा कहीं और मतलब मुंबई के आसपास ही नियर मुंबई ओनली यू गेट मी हां ग्रेट गुड क्वेश्चन थैंक यू नो प्रॉब्लम अभिषेक यू नहीं है कोई चलो चिल्ल है भाई थैंक्स नॉट श्योर विजुअल पाथ तो है ही यहाँ पे बट थैंक्स आई कैन स्पीक तेलुगु आई कैन स्पीक इंग्लिश आई कैन स्पीक हिंदी आई कैन स्पीक मेनी अदर लैंग्वेजेस फ्लुएंटली सो एनी वन नीड असिस्टेंस इन लोकल लैंग्वेज ऑल्सो आई कैन हेल्प यू विद दैट आई 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 सम हाउ लाइक लैंग्वेजेस एंड आई स्पीक मराठी एंड लॉट ऑफ अदर लैंग्वेजेस ऑल्सो तेलुगु इज माई मदर टंग बट आई कैन स्पीक मेनी Uh, so do not worry about the communication part jaisa aapko chahiye the way you want it you will be getting that information but uh, thanks a lot for making my early morning great and i'll see you all next time bye everyone thank you all have a good one thank you